Hello, geometry scholars. Welcome to skill 11.2, which is the perimeters and areas of polygons. So uh, with polygons, uh, we don't have explicit formulas for uh, the area of a polygon. Uh, but one thing we can do is we can kind of divide a polygon, like let's say this regular hexagon, into um, triangles. Uh, we know triangles very well. And uh, there's this concept called a central angle. So to find the central angle, what we do is we take 360 degrees and we divide by the number of sides. So I just write this as 360 over N where n is the number of sides. Uh, you also want to be comfortable because we're actually going to divide those triangles further into uh, right triangles. So uh, you want to remember that sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, you also want to remember that cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse. And you want to remember that tangent of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. And then finally, uh, some of the problems that you're going to see today are related to perimeter. Uh, so perimeter means just distance around the shape. So you just add up all the sides. So it's maybe been a quick while since we've seen that. So let's actually kind of take a look at a area of a hexagon problem now. So uh, game plan, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide in the triangles, divide the triangle in the right triangles, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate that right now. And we're going to actually um, take the triangle divided into right triangles because we know how to do those problems uh, pretty well with trig, even special right triangles in some cases. And uh, then... Uh, we are going to find the missing sides. Compute the area. That's one half times base times height. And then multiply the total number of triangles. That's our game plan on this type of problem. So let's kind of take a look and see how to do it. So I'm going to kind of use these uh, delta map diagrams here. So the first thing we want to do is kind of just find the central angle. So remember, central is just 360 divided by n. I'm going to do 360 divided by 6. And I have a right triangle, or um, when I divide it into half even more. So the central angle is going to be 60 degrees, and the right triangle angle is going to be uh, 60 divided by 2, which is 30 degrees. And that's how we get that shaded triangle in the picture. Um, what's actually kind of nice about the hexagon problems is that you could also use special right triangles with these types of problems as well. And uh, they work out really nicely, uh, but that's only for the hexagons. But if you go to other types of shapes, like octagons or nonagons, uh, you're not going to get that type of effect.
So let's kind of talk about finding the um, base and the height of the triangle. So the first side that we're going to find, uh, you want to make sure that you have your sides nice and labeled. So we always start with that angle that's towards the center. And if we want to find the um, opposite side, I'm going to write down um, sine of 30 equals to your opposite over hypotenuse. And you might just want to kind of write down the basic trig ratio first and then just put in the numbers that you see in the diagram. So I'm going to say that the sine of 30 is equal to x over 4 or 8, opposite over hypotenuse. And I'm going to multiply by 8. And it is a pretty easy cell on your calculator to just type in 8 sine of 30. And when you do that, you're going to get about 4 point something. Uh, actually, it's going to be exactly 4. And that's going to be your base. Then we want to find the height. Uh, so the height... Uh, we want to actually shift gears now and use the adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going to actually circle that. I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to write that cosine of 30 equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. And when I do that, I'm going to plug in my values. So it's going to be y over 8. And this gets us that y is equal to 8 cosine of 30. And this number is not as pretty. Um, I kind of just recommend writing the number as a trig ratio and not spending the time on rounding it. Uh, so you don't want to round too much uh, because it is going to affect that one decimal place answer when you're doing it on delta map. So now uh, we're also going to compute the area as well. So the area is simply half base times height just like we always know. Uh, so you're going to do that the area is half times 4 times 6.9282. And I went to Delta Math Calculator and I kind of um, figured out what those areas were going to be. Let's actually kind of show you that now. Uh, so I got that the area was 13.584. This is your classic half base times height. So once we've done that, uh, we just need to think about maybe multiplying that area by the number of right triangles. So one of the things that you can do pretty nicely to find the total area is uh, that we have essentially for the right triangle, we have a right triangle and there's two right triangles in a whole triangle. 
and in the hexagon situation, there are six total of the 27.71. So you can actually literally say that the area is going to be 12 times that about 13.85. And I didn't see uh, what number uh, that was exactly, but I would trust that you could use your calculator um, and then get that area to uh, one decimal place, which is what we like. Uh, let's talk about a perimeter problem now. Um, I'm using the hexagon again, slightly different uh, type of situation here. And I'm actually for the hexagon uh, just because I'm going to say that we could also use special right triangles. And special right triangles are actually your best friend in the hexagons because the central angles are going to be, you know, 360 divided by 60. They're going to get you those uh, equilateral triangles. Uh, 360 divided by 6, I mean, not 60. But I'm going to kind of talk with you about how the special right triangle is going to make it really nice. So uh, this is an equilateral triangle. And I'm going to further divide this into half of a triangle. To my right triangle. Is essentially. A. 30. 60. 90. Right triangle. Where we know that the hypotenuse is. Six. So if you recall. Um, with special right triangles, we know that our short side is one, our hypotenuse is two, and then my longer side is square root of three. And let's say that I want to find what X is. I could say that X over 1 is equal to 6 over 2, or that my hypotenuse is twice as big as my shortest side. So this means that x is equal to 3. Making the other part of that triangle 3 as well. So now my total of that side is going to be six. I have six sides though. So I could do um, how many X's are in total. So essentially the perimeter is going to be um, 2x times my six triangles. So I'm going to do 2 times 3 times 6. And that's going to get me 36. Uh, you could also reason... Um, simply that you have equilateral triangles as well. And you could actually make the conclusion that the bottom is six. Uh, you could also do uh, for your 30, 60, 90s, if you like Sokotoa, uh, you can do it like that. So a little note before we end. For non-hexagons, uh, you need to use Sokotoa. to find the outer sides. So that is 
area and perimeter of polygons. Uh, so the key is to break them into those familiar uh, right triangles that we know how to do.